So we don't have much time until my friend gets here. Um, so we'll start with the first of all, I made a mistake last video. I was very tired. And I said something that I didn't mean, which was that Rashi in Hebrew, um, I said is Ra is Maimonides, but that's really Rambam. Rashi is not Rambam. He's a prolific comment commenter, commentator, Rabbi Shlomo Itzalas, <laughs> of the Torah. Not just the five books, but a lot of other parts. Okay, now I want to talk about self-celebration, self-care, and what self wants. Like, what do we want? So, um, in this group called Interplay with Sheila Collins and uh, Christine Gotra, we used to use this book called uh, Still Point. And uh, so what is the self-test for self-care? Movement versus stillness work or play like it's a spectrum where we find ourselves on this nourishment abstinence seriousness and humor find ourselves somewhere on this spectrum um pleasure pain next one is next dynamic is challenge support solitude connection variety routine rest recreation taking in letting go then we have um i want so i want to be held respected loved and believed in i want to feel cared for liked related to understood and valued i want to have hope that if it's not now it will happen it will still happen i want to trust that life is miraculous and presence brings pleasure i want to know it's good i'm good and it was is will be and i am good um i'll be right back Okay, somebody is here, but I closed the doors, so I am back. Okay, let's continue. Self-celebration by um, Mendel Kalmanson and Zalman Abraham on Chabad.org. So, in there's a heightened receptiv receptivity that we have to the gifts of others and an awe and a recognition of greatness when we actually celebrate our true self. Because everyone has... In, inimitable purpose with gifts to carry it out arrogance and false humility actually stem from ego and a comparison with other people exagger exaggerator or underestimator of one's abilities importance it's a fundamental fundamental self-centeredness which further separates from one from their fellows creating false paradigm of competition which is really a deep insecurity um, I remember someone named Leo Coglia or something who was on the bus he said your talent is God's gift to you what you do with it is your gift or no, maybe he wasn't on the bus. Leo bus, Caglia. I think I'm quoting someone. I wrote it down. Your talent is God's gift to you. What you do with it is your gift to God. Leo bus, Caglia. Okay, hopefully that I'm quoting it right. Um, when we don't shrink from our positive self-acknowledgement, but one who's confidently aware of their own value, we can actually accredit our talents and achievements to God and appreciate them. The the. The Mishnah, which is from the time of the Talmud, um, the Jewish uh, learnings, it says, who is honored, who honors others. If someone was in my shoes, they may have done a better job, right? Then again, our, we have its divine gifts, our qualities and accomplishments, whether it's creativity, insight, or ingenuity. Am I reaching my own potential for greatness? How am I using the divine gifts that were, God gave to me? There's this word, anava, which and it's humility, which we say it's really a responsibility and accountability. Because in Latin, humilis means meek and lowly. But in Hebrew, anava from anu, to respond, to be able to uh, proficiency and privilege. It, we don't perversely inflate our, our sense of self-worth or supremacy above others, but it fills us with a gratitude and indebtedness, generating greater dedication to our mission. Friedrich Buchner says, your vocation in life is where your greatest talent and joy meet the world's greatest needs. Our purpose, our cause, our, our ambition is not for self-aggrandizement. It's it's actually the best leaders. It's like larger than the self. We strive for this with indomitable will, anchoring pursuit of excellence as an instrument for the greater whole, for positive change in the world. That's what we utilize our resources for. And um, the seven qualities that foster trust in God. Um,
So, um, I don't remember the source for this, but it's a Torah source in the Torah. So I will try to put it in the description. Compassionate and loving. God loves me and wants my good. Attentive. God will not go to sleep. God will get the job done. Almighty. No one and nothing can stop God from fulfilling his wishes. All knowing. God will ensure that all outcomes are good. Exclusive care. God has always taken care of me and won't stop that I'm in his hands. It is only God who can get things done. And I'm deserving because God is generous. Um, and I want to talk now about healthy masculine. Often we say God is, uh, you know, the masculine, the transcendent. But I talk about the inner masculine, that inner self. I call it like my inner father, you know, the way that we relate to the masculine figure. Um, one will, not divided, like this focus, aim, an empowered drive and interest toward a singular goal, acquisition, or conquest without getting distracted, scattered, diffused, which then weakens the force and ability that unity gives to that penetration. Um, desirous of having something of his own, seeing fruit of his actions and efforts from valuing his work and time and strength, being motivated by cultivating observa observable, ref by his cultivations that have observable effects. And a big picture awareness, yes versus no clarity. So without getting lost in the details, the hair's breadth, differences where there's a gray area of uncertainty. And, uh... In terms of recovering, I want to talk about a few things here. So, um, in recovery, it's sometimes we have to spend time alone without anyone or anything to buffer the silence or fill the space. It could be mundane tasks and errands. Um, we have a new way that we connect with them, chores, household jobs. We don't hold on to the fantasy of the ex at the expense of reality, and we don't listen to the gratitude of the hearts and minds and not choose to listen only to come and and recovery is listening also to the gratitude of the heart and mind and not choosing to listen only to complaints or only self-validating positive feedback from outside like the validating positive feedback from outside in other words being able to say well if they say nice things about me they could say mean things about me if i say mean things about me i could say nice things about me and being able to discern between helpful and unhelpful thoughts this is what i've been working on so much today and yesterday like which thoughts are helpful obsession is when the thought is not helpful. We cannot focus, right? There's really a message from it. I tried to say, what are you trying to tell me? Come, come, come. I make space for you. What is it you want me to know? What are you trying desperately to get my attention about that you keep forcing me to think about that? Um, setting up for success, we plan meals, we set boundaries in ourselves. Boundaries are not others. They're, you know, we, have, we set limits with others, but boundaries really exist inside. And taking it one day at a time. We, know, we do our best, Hashem does the rest, we say, or one step at a time. We only use uh, creativity to worry we, we don't use creativity to worry or, like, memory to ruminate. And, um... I think we're about to be finished. There's, I think, one more thing I wanted to share. I want to talk a little bit just about unhealthy coping. Worries that I saved for later, patterns to work with. So, so, um, thinking my pain or expression posture is ugly, trying to separate myself off to not get consumed by consuming, by becoming bigger physically, overeating, weighing more, gaining, um, covering up my beauty and sexiness to feel safe and undetectable by the piranhas or predators, trying to kill my sensitivity rather than take care to cater to my sensitivities. Some over under sensitivities can be healed through gentle awareness and exposure. Um, and then I wanted to share, um, some worries that I had saved for later, which as it turned out, you don't really save. It was, um, before August from the summer. So if you think about it, what I was writing about was the reservation. This is I wrote this last year. I was writing about from like basically six months before that, that I'm already dead and being punished as living this life. I won't have a place to live. This is August in 2023 or I'll die August 1, 2023. This is before that. I was like holding on to these. And, and when you, you, when you expose these, you become less sensitive and you don't have to hold it on, right? Like, wait, that no one will be attracted to me in the way I need, that I won't be okay without this man named Michael, who I was connected with, attached, and that I'll have to move on without him, that I don't belong in Crown Heights, I won't have money to pay bills, will have more pain in my body and heart, that I failed my mission, that I'll hurt Michael, or that I'll hurt Pinchas, or that David robbed me of something I can never get back, that Yaakov from, from 770 won't want me, that I'm a hypocrite, that God doesn't love me because I eat too much, I'll never finish the book I'm typing, that I waste my time watching... Uh, 
I, I'm doing these YouTube videos um, that I'm a waste, purposeless, aimless, irrelevant. I'll have to keep up too high uh, level of work. My family and friends will raise their heels over me. I'm uglier and weir weirder than I realize that the hairiness that I have won't go away, that the HPV will never go away, that I'll never get married or have kids or be in a successful career, or that I don't, I don't earn anything worthy or valuable for my future. And then the patterns to work with. So now we can say, well, I don't have control over all of those things, whether or not they happen. So what are the patterns that I could work with? Laziness, dishonesty, selfishness, projecting. The pattern of denial, avoidance, distraction, and redirecting. The pattern of controlling, using, and manipulating. The pattern of using good and bad labels on people, good versus bad. Um, the pattern of bullying, provoking anger. The pattern of making excuses for myself and others and not uh, to not grow, even though it can be toward the better, right? Toward better. Um, and finally, the pattern of withholding positive feedback and encouragement. So I think that's a good place to stop. And um, we covered a lot. And... Uh, this video is from yesterday because I, uh, it was, well, it's from today really, but it was, it was the Sabbath. I couldn't do a video. So hopefully this will be helpful and I wish you a good week. Bye.